At the moment, as you also know, there, is a, there are a set of private tragedies going on from Holland. Ayan Hersjali, who you'll know of, of course, no longer lives in Holland. One of the immigrants that Holland needed most left. Uh, Ayan Hersjali, of course, now living in Washington. Um, Giet Wilders, her fellow MP, uh, lives under constant armed guard. Um, when he drives out, two motorcades go out, one decoy. Uh, wherever he drives, uh, he can't campaign. Has an election in Holland this week. His, two of his supporters only two weeks ago were beaten up by Moroccans in Amsterdam putting up posters. The process of democracy, in other words, is becoming exceedingly dangerous. Young Dutch supporters of Wilders will not stand for his party. Not because they don't support him and not because they don't have guts, but because they will have to have security protection for the rest of their lives if they stand as a candidate. That's a large amount to ask of a young man or woman starting out in a political career. Um, a friend of mine, Bachan Splat, a, um, a head of the only conservative think tank in Holland, the Burke uh, Institute, uh, it's a wonderful organization set up a few years ago, was told shortly before Van Gogh's death by the, the police in Holland that he should take uh, protection. Uh, he said, well, if I need protection, why will you not protect me? And he said, well, they said, well, there isn't enough money. Uh, but they suggested he paid for it himself at the cost of 100 euros an hour, which, as you'll know, there's not that kind of money in think tanks. Um, so he went without protection until an hour after Van Gogh's death when the police were at his house and uh, whisked him away and gave him protection since. Afshin Elian, a great friend of mine, one of the great philosophers, I think, of Europe now, um, fled the Ayatollah Khomeini as a young man, fled to Afghanistan, where he then fled the Taliban and landed up in Holland, where he currently teaches at the University of Leiden, teaches law and philosophy. And he lives now under death sentence in Holland. Um, having th fled theofascism all his life, he's now encountered its worst form in Holland, where security guards sit on campus with him. The campus is searched for bombs every morning. Um, Again, this is no life, and all that he has done is write newspaper columns fortnightly for main conservative newspaper. Um, there are people who have stopped because they are so scared of what's going to happen. I know of journalists and others who simply stopped talking about uh, Islam. In one case, he went on television to read out his last newspaper column and said, leave me alone. I won't talk about Islam. I'll just continue teaching. Don't, don't hurt me. This is spreading across Europe which is why it's important to tackle it now there. In Denmark, only a couple of weeks ago, we all have heard of the cartoons catastrophe, and incidentally, those people who tell you that, uh, and you hear them a lot, that there was something provocative about that. We should do the thought test. What could you do if you wanted to make a criticism of something that would be smaller than drawing a cartoon? Those people who say that, we should have no truck with. But in Holland and Denmark, cartoons at the moment matter. Two weeks ago, a, Dutch, a group of Dutch school, uh, sorry, of Danish school kids went on a kind of scout camp thing and demonstrating that humor isn't dead among the young of Denmark uh, had their own mini cartoon competition. Uh, footage of this, filmed by someone, seems to be an infiltrator from another uh, political organization, filmed this and passed it to one of the main imams in Denmark who's just condemned by fatwa these young boys to death. Um, some of us are currently working at a fund to try to protect them, and I very gladly pass on details if you're interested afterwards. Um, in Belgium, one of the MPs, Mouat Boussacle, lives uh, under death sentence, lives under protection. The AEL, which was mentioned just now in 2002, had effectively a Kristallnacht imitation pogrom in, uh, in Antwerp, uh, in which the head of the AEL, the uh, thug and Hezbollah trainee Dayed Abu Jaja led chants in support of Osama bin Laden, the smashing up of Jewish stone shops, and then culminating in the chant Hamas, Hamas, Allah Yudan al Hetgas, Hamas, Hamas, all Jews to the gas. If we don't recognize these echoes now, I don't know when we will. In France, just a few weeks ago, as you'll know, Redek, a school teacher, um, has had to go into hiding after writing an article critical of Islam. Last two weeks ago, a German MP who spoke out, a Turkish immigrant MP who spoke out against the veil, was given death threats and now lives uh, under armed guard and in secure accommodation. 
The truth is this is simply spreading. It's even the case sometimes in the UK. I um, was invited by the uh, left-leaning newspaper, The Guardian, to write an article the other week explaining why I still support the Iraq war, uh, the bafflement and amazement they feel that uh, needs them to commission such articles was evident, and um, in response just to that, among other things, there were um, suggestions posted up on the Guardian website that I should be beheaded. Um, and uh, one post said that I should be beheaded because only if I was beheaded would there be peace. I think it's a new movement, pacifists for beheading. Um, but uh, I showed a I showed submission, the Iron Herzl van Gogh film in public for the first time to group of MPs, peers and others a couple of weeks ago and had armed guards for that. So sadly it's spreading but there's no reason why we should step down or why we should be quieter, why we should stop. Um, the mosque which Melanie just mentioned, the Tabliki mosque, the Tabliki have a metaphor for how they're going to spread. They say that they put out the tentacles into Europe. They will put out the leads of all these light bulbs across Europe. All the strands will go out and then Allah will turn on the lights. I suggest to you that if that light and those lights start to come on, the light of Europe will go out. But Europe is reawakening. And this is why I say do not be pessimists, do not sign up for Schadenfreude, and do not abandon this. Um, there are many movements in Europe at the moment, political and literary, to stop this. Just in the last few months, there's a new magazine started up in, in France, a superb magazine countering this, called um, Le Demain du Monde. Uh, do get it. Uh, Pinio, a new Dutch magazine, starting up next month in Holland. Um, there's a new publishing house in Italy, new newspapers in Italy. Across Europe, there is, a, there is a strong and, I hope, more and more connected movement of MPs, representatives, journalists, and others who are standing up to this threat. And they are saying without any compunction, and bravely, I think, in many of their cases, if you want Sharia law, you can go and have it, but it will not be here. It will not be in our lands. We have to be better at giving out that message, and I hope that you Americans will continue to support us as we say these things.